All right, so let's talk about how to choose centers. Um, today we're not going to be going too deeply into this because I want you to get some experience with an RBF before we um, kind of dig deep into that. But um, choosing centers, there's basically a couple ways to do it. Um, number one, we could uh, try clustering the domain. Right, we're using the same vocabulary. Um, we might as well try clustering. Um, of course, the number of centers is still a question, right, in, in a lot of the clustering algorithms. But you could do a, like some kind of growing clustering algorithm, growing neural gas, for example. Um, there is a growing uh, k-means clustering that we could try. Um, the problem with uh, things like regression on the domain is that the, cluster, the data points that you're given may just be a uniform sample. And so, uh, you know, there may not be too much of a point to do the clustering, but uh, that's one option. Um, another option, and it may seem silly, but it actually works pretty darn well. And that is choose the centers at random from the data. Uh, yeah, it actually works pretty well. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think the question is, is in the problem that you're working with, uh, are you willing to spend time uh, really cranking down where the best possible centers are, or do you just need a fast approximation? Um, and a lot of times all you need is a fast, fast approximation, and so you don't want to be spending a lot of time with these other algorithms. Clustering is not too bad, but the one I'm about to talk about, orthogonal, well I'm not going to talk about it today, but orthogonal least squares, or OLS, is kind of a nice way to um, find the centers. Like I said, this is going to be uh, later if we have time. But these two methods are uh, pretty easy for us to implement right now, and so those are the ones that we're going to focus on. And in fact, we'll, we'll just pick a few at random to start with, and then uh, later on we'll try clustering the domain. Good. So then once you have your centers, like I was saying, once we have centers, and the function phi, uh, then let x, matrix x, be, um, let's see, what should I have the size be? I'd like to have w x, in fact, I'd like to have w matrix x plus b defined. Um, so W is going to be, oops, actually that's not X. Uh, oh, let's call it capital Phi um, plus B. I'd like to have this defined. Um, this is going to be M by K, and so that's going to be K by P, <coughs> and this will be uh, M, well, it's an M by one, right? But it's going to be repeated several times. Okay, so um, just a, that was just a quick shorthand here. So this is telling me that if I have, if X is my N by P data points, then I can form matrix phi, where phi i j is equal to small phi, and then it's the norm of which data point with which center. <coughs> the k is measuring which center, right, so that's going to be um, ci, and then the p is measuring which data point, so that's going to be j, right? Good. And so this is going to be running through all your data points and all your centers. Excellent. And so we're going to end up with this matrix now. 
and this is going to be equal to um, y, which is what size? m by p. Oops. Ah, darn it. Okay, so how are we going to solve this system of equations? Actually, this is going to be the target's t, I should say. <coughs> target's t will be m by p. Good. So, uh, we we typically will want to get rid of the b, right? So solve, solving for w and b. So again, w is m by k, b is m by 1. Uh, do you remember how to change this problem into a, into a linear problem? That's right, we take w hat to be w and then B is our last column. So let's make sure that that fits, right? So this is M by K, and then this is an M by 1. And so this is going to be an M by K plus 1, right? Good. And then that's going to be multiplied times phi with 1's along the bottom. And so phi is a k by, it should be k by p, but now it's a k plus 1, k plus 1 by p, right? And so that's going to be equal to our uh, targets. And so those are going to be m by p, those are going to be given to us, right? So can we solve this uh, for this uh, w? Of course, how are we going to do it? Take the pseudo inverse of this guy. And so we'll have w hat times phi, let's call it phi hat, is equal to t. We take the pseudo inverse of that, and so we're going to be multiplying on the right from both sides. And so w hat is going to be uh, t times phi hat, um, yeah, with a dagger. And so remember that this was formed from the SVD, from the SVD. Good. And uh, that's how you solve your radio basis function. Of course, I should say that if you don't have all your data at once, um, there could be two, there could be multiple problems happening in that case, right? Because you could be adding to your domain in which case your centers may not be good enough anymore. And so if you if you get, you know, if you have an online version of your RBF, that could be hard to track. Um, but if you know that your domain is pretty well uh, situated, that you don't have to add any more centers, then there is a way to, you know, we could use something like Woodrow Hoff for stochastic gradient descent, right, to, to uh, do an online update. Good. Gosh, I think we can solve that for our W, or our W hat. Of course, then you remember that you have to um, peel off the B, right, when you're doing these. Good. All right. So I think I'm going to stop there for today because um, I wanted to spend uh, Friday working over examples um, and um, coding, that's what I'm trying to say, programming. <laughs> so on Friday, uh, next time, ah, gosh. next time, coding and examples. Good. So, uh, no more homework tonight. Remember that you have homework uh, that's due today and another homework that's due tomorrow, but I might extend that to Friday. Uh, of course, if you're watching this at a different semester than Spring 21, then uh, something else might be going on. <laughs> uh, but I'll send an email about all that in the morning. All right, I'll see you later.